Welcome to the celebration space. My name is Kaylee Phelps and today we're talking about organizing the not so secret life of pets. So if you've seen the movie The Secret Life of Pets, it's it's pretty funny. It's it's a um animated movie, but basically what I wanted to talk about today is how to organize your pet's materials. We know that animals come with a ton of stuff and kind of incorporate it into your decor and make sure that it's nice and easy for you and your pets to know where their stuff is. So um, just for a little bit of context, I wanted to let y'all know that um, I only have, I have two cats. I live in a two bedroom, two bath apartment, so I don't want there to be any, um, you know, anyone wondering where all of the dog material is. I'm gonna try to talk to things or speak to things that um, are pretty universal. Maybe not if you have like a fish tank or like hamsters or something, but I'm gonna try to, to keep it pretty user-friendly for anyone that has any kind of different pet. Um, I did grow up with a golden retriever, and then I've had cats off and on my entire life. Um, Dolly, our older tortoiseshell cat, um, she will be 13 in September, but I adopted her in January of 2018. Um, I really wanted an animal, and I was still traveling a ton for work, getting on a plane at least twice a month um, for personal and business reasons so that was really um she's been wonderful and i adopted her at 10 and then we just got millie here um at the end of may and she is about i think four and a half months old so she's she's kind of wild but um so this is going to be a little bit more about those two and what i do to organize their materials um but i will touch on some other things and if you have any questions comments concerns as usual please feel free to drop them in the comments and i'll get back to you as soon as i can so i'm gonna start um i'm in the doorway of my home i'll flip it around so you can see there's a lot of doors going on so this is the door out to the hallway in our apartment complex and this is a coat closet that's like the first door on the right so I wanted to just kind of show that if I did have a puppy which I would love to have a puppy but I don't um, I would probably you know naturally have to keep some items here so I keep my scarves right on this hanger here but I think that if you have a pet where you're going outside with them a lot keeping it nice and easy and simple and I think most dog lovers already do but just keeping things right near the doorway so that it's easy for you um i know that for our cats we have a little closet that i'm going to show you in a little bit and i always joke that it's like pavlov's cat where whenever i open the door um dolly usually comes running thinking that she's getting more food or getting some treats or um different things like that so that might happen to you as well whenever you open the door but so maybe you have some kind of structure where you can keep everything right there but as you can tell this is a pretty tight space there's not really a ton of room to drop things off but um so I would put leash and some items up here and then we have here I'll show y'all um so we have some bins at the top of our closet that we use for different items so um for this one it's more scarves and for this one it's um different gloves I think and maybe some shoe shine but we have um this and I would probably keep all of my things for outside so any little poop bags some treats different things that you need on the go right here in your closet so that it's really nice and close and easy for you um as far as our animals the closest thing that we have to the doorway is if you're walking in right to um your left we have this bookcase. So this is where we keep our keys. This is where we keep everything. You can kind of see that there's a little bit of a divot in the wall. So I didn't really know what to put here because you can put like a buffet table or something here, but it also is kind of a narrow entry. So, um, so I did a bookshelf and really, if you watched one of my last videos about repurposing items, you'll, you'll notice and recognize this little guy right here. So this, um, at the bottom here is where we keep most of our cat toys, not all of them, but, um, oh, you can hear some of them chirping. But really this started out here because when I was working in an office setting, um, when I would come home from work, Dolly would always run to the door and flop right here and start purring and drooling. Um, and so I usually would just set my stuff down and play with her right here. So this living room space, especially if you um, want to encourage particularly a cat to be 
more friendly maybe to having visitors you're gonna want to have them be more comfortable in the universal universal spaces in your home not just a bedroom um so we keep the toys out here it really encourages the girls to come out and play and both of them know that their items are right here i have millie locked away right now she's in timeout because she was she's about she's going through some teething stuff so she's a little bit bitey and i just could not handle biting during my live but um but yes both of them know that their toys are here millie will often like get in there and pull toys out and run around with them so they know just like we humans are creatures of habit um our animals are as well and they like to know where their stuff is so that's where it is and normally if i find something in the middle but like as i'm waking up in the morning or before I go to sleep, I'll just put the stuff back in this basket um, so that they know where their stuff is. So moving on, coming into the living room, um, I have some more cat toys just kind of like right here just so that you have some context. This is where our, our living room has a little bit of an odd setup, but um, but yeah, so we have some items over here, the scratching post and a little scratching, um, you know, flat surface. So both of them are there because both of our cats do have all of their claws. Um, so they both need that scratching post so that they aren't scratching our, our furniture. Um, Millie is still kind of learning the ropes. Dolly's pretty good about it, but if you are having an issue with an animal, specifically a cat scratching your furniture, putting double-sided tape really helps um, with Dolly and um, also just getting a fabric shaver if you have a fabric couch so that you can shave off some of the some of the little stray um, strands that come out if they did um, scratch up. But really, I like having this corner over here and part of the joke of the not so secret life of pets is that, like I said, I don't think that anyone who is an animal lover expects someone to come into their home and be, see an animal and be like, oh my gosh, I had no idea that you had a cat or a dog or a bunny or whatever it is. I think as animal lovers, we typically are like, look at this picture of my adorable pet. So most people should know when they come to your home that you have animals, especially for me. I usually check in to see if people have any kind of cat allergy and if it's extreme. Um, and if someone even has a mild one, I usually you know, vacuum and then lint roll down just and keep the girls in one space so that um, you can kind of mitigate that. But yeah, I think it's more about making sure that your animals know where their items are and then also incorporating it into your home so this little corner um like i said i like to have it like toys in the living room space to encourage them to come out when we have guests and also keeping a scratching pole close to items that they like to scratch so for example our couches and um the chair it will help just to distract um from any items that you don't want them to scratch so these two over here i got this scratching post off of amazon i really was looking for something just neutral so that it's not like a lime green scratching post in the middle of my predominantly like wood gray black and cream living room so this really worked out nicely this over here was actually something um this like flat scratching surface it has two balls that roll back and forth and they're actually holiday themed it came from christmas time so it's like a red and a green ball and as you can probably tell all of our toys over here are all different colors but you can't really tell when you walk in and it's not an eyesore so for me that's whatever floats their boat is best. So um, if you've also watched that repurposed video, you probably know that we have placemats for our cats. So um, they're right over here, kind of on the kitty corner, pun intended, that, um, that we keep all of their food right here. So Dolly was in the shelter for about just shy of the of a year just because she was a senior kitty at 10 years old and she's a black cat so please adopt senior animals they are lovely and honestly having millie i've always adored dolly but having millie has made me appreciate having an older animal who is already trained and doesn't need to be disciplined and has you know she's pretty mellow although millie's a ball of joy it definitely is um you know hard work 
disciplining a kitten. But anyway, so we would love to not free feed at all, but we tried doing feeding on a schedule. I know that it's better for most animals, um, but Dolly will eat all at one time and then throw up. And then we noticed that Millie wasn't gaining a ton of weight. So something that um, we do is this silver bowl is really always dry food. So that's, that's, that's Dolly's bowl. Millie usually eats out of it. But right over here is a white bowl that's usually wet food. So we have two of those bowls. And um, normally whenever I do feed them wet food, I give them separate so that like Millie can do her own thing and then Dolly can do her own thing. And then normally if there's anything left from what Dolly ate, Millie will go over there and be the cleanup crew. But it just kind of, it's, it's that Pavlov's dog, that um, sense of security, knowing what they have. And then also just really simply like having a silver bowl always for dry food and then having this white bowl. It, it's, stays pretty metal, mellow and it kind of blends in and they also it's nice having them in the living room they like to eat when we eat so um and then lastly over here before we go in just another space is um the water bowl is always out it's always refillable and it has that little placemat under it so now we're gonna go into kind of where the real stuff is which is in our bedroom so when we adopted Millie just sidebar um we did have her in our guest bathroom um and she was all set up in there and then we kind of graduated her from the guest bathroom to the guest bedroom and then let her roam and we um we had some guests around the fourth of july so we really wanted to move everything into our side of the house so that um when we did have guests over they really didn't have to kind of compete or look at any cat poo while they were um you know in that side of the home so we moved both litter boxes over here and I'll start with that so right here is Dolly's litter box and we jokingly call it the igloo just because it's huge Dolly um, another reason she was adopted before I adopted her but she actually was brought back to the shelter because she pees standing up it's just what she does so um you need kind of an enclosure just so that it doesn't go over the back wall of even a higher litter box so it's something that has really worked out for her she loves it and we do have a litter pad here which i i highly recommend to any um any person that has pets and that like there's always going to be tracking no matter what cat litter you use there's always going to be some tracking so having that there is just really helpful especially if it's in a place that's kind of high traffic like ours is in our bathroom so um that has really helped us out as you can tell it's pretty neutral so it's just black and white and gray our bathroom also has those colors black white and gray so that's been um nice and easy and then over here on the other side of the toilet is where millie's is so we also got a little litter pad for her and then just a gray um gray litter box so they're far enough apart that really they haven't had problems with it, but um, Millie has started invading Dolly's space. So as we're leaving town, we're probably going to um, set up another litter box in the other bathroom just so that there's more space around and we're, we're not gonna be here. We have really lovely friends who um, watch our pets for us. So we're gonna give them a heads up on that, more on that on Friday as we're preparing to travel and not bring the cats. Um, most of our trips up to Michigan, we have brought Dolly. I jokingly call her a cross country cat, but we're leaving them here together to do some bonding and just to make it easier for us to be able to travel. And with that, I'm gonna go to kind of the last place where we keep most of our stuff. We do have some cat toys in in our bedroom, I'll show that really quick. Um, where under this little perch, um, you can see there's a little um, a little cactus there and it's catnip and Dolly just likes to hang out under there and both girls like to go up there and look out on their little perch. Um, so I am going to lastly go into the closet where we keep most of our stuff. So you can see up top it's board games. We love board games as you can probably tell just from this. And I'm going to slowly try to transition the camera down. All right, let's see how that did. Okay, so 
these last bottom three shelves are where we have all of our stuff for our animals and make it really easy this is all food so this is wet food on this side this is dry food on this side we keep a little um half cup in the dry food just so that it's easy for us to measure out for the cats every day um like i said when i open this door i'm surprised well, Dolly's in timeout, or excuse me, Millie's in timeout, but I'm surprised Dolly didn't come running. She already got her treats this morning, which speaking of, this middle shelf is really kind of everything in between. So I have this basket, which has all of the treats on this side. So we have some relaxing treats, we have some all natural treats, we have some chicken treats, some dental treats, some hairball treats. I mean, all different kinds. Some catnip and then this little baggie within here has that double-sided tape that I was talking about it has toothbrush it has little smaller toys so things that we don't use as much it has their clippers um, I do use my Google Calendar to remind myself to clip their nails just because both of them do have all of their nails um, and then we have the brush this is Dolly's favorite thing in the world and we have um, which I would re recommend this especially if you're traveling with an animal um, it's waterless shampoo so I never spray it it's just to directly spray it on the animal but um but I actually spray it onto the brush and then I brush her and she's much more open to that. It kind of helps to take up some oil and some dirt, especially when you're traveling and like Dolly will get in and out of the litter box and you can tell that she's a little bit stressed. So that's really great. We have filters for their water in here and then also just kind of scratching and lint rolling item piece here. Um, we have, I also have all kinds of sprays if you, um, have cats you know that they're extremely territorial so this is scratch stop and this is bliss mist and I actually got really upset because when I saw the ingredients on this scratch stop it's literally just water emulsifiers lemon oil and eucalyptus oil I have lemon oil eucalyptus oil and water so I probably could have made this um, pretty easily and you if you haven't watched my DIY um, you know disinfectant spray it's something that you can pretty easily um, have and then we do have a more strong boundary spray just to um, we've sprayed this around some items particularly for Millie that she likes to just kind of mess with so all of that's in here and then we have this fun green toy that really Dolly doesn't love electronic toys, but Millie, um, being the hyper ball of joy that she is, will play with it. And I'll turn it on just so that you can see it. It's pretty cool. But yeah, so it's kind of like a whack-a-mole type system. Um, but because it is a little bit loud, we'll get it out whenever she's really hyper and then just put it back in here depending on how much she uses it. And then down here is really just a ton of litter stuff. So... You have temporary box um, and then three different kinds of litter that we've tried throughout um, and then another scoop. So that's really all of the stuff in here. I think that just having a dedicated space to where all of your stuff is um, is helpful just so that, you know, both of all of your animals know where their stuff is and it's easy for you to know what you have. There's nothing worse than like going to get more litter or ordering something and then you look and you see that you already have litter you already have food so trying to use the rest of um we're trying to use the rest of this i will definitely do a video for my cat lovers on different types of litter that we've tried which ones we really like um and although i am still working through what we have because i think that the most green thing that you can do is use what you have um even if it's maybe not the most eco-friendly thing or i know that at PetSmart um or petco excuse me um although i'm sure PetSmart does something similar you can always donate items that you haven't used so that it can go to a shelter and help an animal in need so that is how I organize all of our cat stuff. As you can tell, they are pretty special little girls that are spoiled, but they don't have anything too crazy. We try to usually have like perches incorporated into our space already for them. I think one day maybe they'll get a cat tree. But yeah, that's all that I have for you today. Please don't hesitate to send me any comments below. And until next time, enjoy celebrating today.